Today is another one of those great days where we get to apply our knowledge of mathematics to solve a question of military strategy. I found this problem on an old puzzle forum, I'll leave a link in the description. It says, an enemy submarine starts at a position P0 on the number line. This is an integer position, like 1, 2, 3, negative 4, negative 10, it's an integer. It moves at an integer velocity V units per second, so perhaps 2 units per second, or negative 12 units per second, just some integer velocity. Each second, we may fire a torpedo at one point on the number line. If the submarine is at this point where we fire the torpedo, at the time we fire it, then of course we will hit and destroy the submarine. The question, is there a strategy that guarantees we will hit the submarine? The submarine is somewhere on the number line, some integer point, and every second it moves some integer number of points in a particular direction based on whatever that velocity is. We don't know where it starts, we don't know that integer P0, and we don't know its velocity, we don't know that integer V. But despite that, is it possible we could concoct a strategy that's guaranteed to hit the submarine within a finite amount of time. Here's your chance to pause the video and try your hand at a solution in the comments. I'm not going to jump straight into the solution, but we will now begin discussing some strategies. A picture is always a great way to start trying to solve a problem. So here's a number line. I've drawn it in blue because a submarine is a C vehicle. And its initial position is right here at P0. We of course don't know where this is on the number line, but we're writing it right here. Since the velocity of the submarine V is in units per second, after one second the submarine will have moved, let's say, over here to the point P0 plus V. And of course, after another second passes, it will move over here to the point P0 plus 2V, and so on. We can see already how some very simple strategies might fail. We could be trying to shoot our torpedo somewhere on the number line, and then every second just moving it forward one unit and trying to hit all of these points going to the right. That strategy wouldn't work because every second when we move our target forward one unit, well, a second has passed, so the submarine would also move forward V units, and we would just stay forever behind the submarine. A simple solution to that problem would be to have our torpedo moving opposite the direction of the submarine's travel, so the situation would look like this, and then eventually they would have to intersect. However, this isn't a possible strategy, because we don't know the direction of the submarine. We don't know the velocity V, we don't know if it's positive, meaning the submarine's moving to the the right, or negative, meaning the submarine's moving to the left. So we can't use a strategy like that where our torpedo is moving opposite the direction of the submarine because we don't know the direction of the submarine. Now both of these bad strategies I've described involve the torpedo starting somewhere and then moving in a single direction. Of course, we probably don't want a strategy like that. We would like a strategy that's going to hit every point on the number line. Since we don't know where the submarine begins, and we don't know its velocity, surely, for a strategy to work, it's going to need to hit every single number on the number line. So is there a strategy like that, where we will torpedo, eventually, every single point on the number line? Yes, there certainly is. There are, of course, infinitely many integers on the number line, but it's the smallest sort of infinity. It's what we call a countable infinity. One simple way we could count every integer on the number line, and thus fire a torpedo at every single point, would be to start at zero, so we would fire at zero first, and then the next second we would fire at one, and then the next second fire at negative one, and then the next second fire at two, and then the next second fire at negative two, and then the next second fire at at three, and then the next second at negative three, and so on, zigzagging between the positives and negatives, and eventually we would hit every single one. All right, so this is definitely a strategy that would have the torpedo hitting every single point on the number line, but is this guaranteed to hit the submarine? Unfortunately, the answer is still no. For example, if the initial position P0 of the submarine was 100, and let's just say the velocity was 2, we would never catch up to the submarine. Yes, we would hit every number eventually, and so the torpedo would eventually be fired at 
at the point 100, but by that time, the submarine will have moved far away. It's moving to the right at a velocity of two units per second. So certainly this strategy doesn't guarantee us a hit on the submarine. We're going to have to do better. We're going to have to get pretty devious if we want our torpedo to rip this submarine to shreds, which we absolutely do. So let's consider creating an equation which describes the path of the submarine. Thankfully, the situation here is pretty straightforward. I'll use P to denote the path of the submarine, and this is going to be a function of time. For any given time, this function will tell me the position of the submarine. Its position at time t is its initial position at time zero, which is P zero, plus its velocity times the amount of time that has passed, so plus t times v. This is a simple linear function. Remember that p0 and v, although they are unknown, they are fixed. The submarine has some initial position and some fixed velocity. The only variable here is t. t time is passing. Now, how many of these position functions are possible? We don't know p0, we don't know v, but how many different possibilities are there? Well, because p0 could be any integer, and v could be any integer, there are of course infinitely many possible position functions. Every one of those functions, of course, is specified by a p0, a starting point, and a v, a velocity. Now, if this number of position functions is countable, well then we're actually really close to having an effective strategy here. If there are countably many position functions, that means that we could list them. We could say, okay, one position function we'll call P1, another position function we'll call P2, another one we'll call P3, and so on. We could, in theory, list all possible position functions. I'll convince you in a moment that we can in fact do this, but let's just take for granted for a second that we can. If we can list all the position functions, then how could we devise a strategy that's guaranteed to hit the submarine? Well, think about this. If the submarine is following position function P1, where will the submarine be at time T equals one? Well, of course, if it's following the position function P1, then it's going to be at the position P1 of one at time T equals one. What if the submarine is following position function P2? Then where will it be at time T equals two? Well, of course, it would be at position P2 of two. Of course, the submarine is only actually following one of these position functions, but whichever one it is, let's call it K, at time t equals k, the position of the submarine is going to be p k of k. Thus, if in fact we can list the possible position functions like this, then the strategy that will be guaranteed to hit the submarine eventually is to shoot our torpedo at the position p t of t at time t. Thus, at time t equals one, we would fire our torpedo at position p1 of one. At time t equals two, we would fire at p2 of two, and so on. This way, whatever position function the sub follows, if we call it pk, we're guaranteed to hit the sub within k seconds. Because at time t equals k, the sub will be at position pk of k, and that's exactly where this strategy has us shooting our torpedo. Of course, it's also possible that we happen to luck out and hit it before then, if its path following PK intersects with one of our other locations. But if not before T equals K, certainly at T equals K, we will hit the sub. If the sub is following position function P60 from our list, then we are guaranteed to hit it within a minute and bring an end to this constant torpedoing. So then the only hand up you may still have with this solution is how do we know we can actually list the position functions like this? We previously said that the number line, which consists of infinitely many integers, is a countable infinity because we could list them all off like this, for example. The position function is a bit different though because instead of dealing with a single integer, which describes a point on the number line, this deals with two integers. To describe a position function, we need the initial position, p0, and the velocity, v. Because a position function is described by two numbers, rather than trying to list the integers on a number line, what we're trying to do here is to list 
all integer pairs in the xy plane. We may say that the horizontal x-axis here represents the possible values for p0, and the vertical y-axis represents the possible velocities. If we could systematically list every integer point in this plane, then we would systematically be listing or counting every single possible position function. And thus we could create a list like this, p1, p2, p3, and so on, listing every position function. And thankfully, it's quite easy to imagine a way that we might list all integer pairs on this xy plane. We could very simply follow this sort of spiral pattern. One by one, we're listing off every possible position function, and they get further and further away from the origin on this xy plane. There is no position function possible which would not eventually be hit by this listing method. Every possible position function is somewhere on this plane, and following this spiral method of listing them off, we will eventually hit every single integer point. Since the possible position functions are countable, and we can put them in a list, this is a valid strategy guaranteed to hit the sub within k seconds, if we suppose that it follows position function pk. So that's a solution to this submarine puzzle. Let me know your thoughts and if you had any questions in the comments. Thank you very much for watching and be sure to subscribe for more of the swankiest math videos on the internet. I'm unstable, I'm feeling hard to keep a cable cut and unsold the table. Texas instruments don't reply, I think this time it might be fatal. Wish to sell my own fake, cause I'm jaded. Hate the odds that I calculated. Press and pull a brain, push it all the way through the whole blue planet faded. Psychosomatic habits, why you so, so.